he said, This is where the rest of my life began. This is where one life ended and another was launched. We have reached the end of Rwanda and are looking across the Akagera River to Tanzania on the far side. Jean-Claude Munyazamu and I walk out to the middle of the bridge, a single span that shudders and bounces with every transport truck that rumbles past us in the heat. Below the bridge, the river narrows into the rapids of Rusumo Falls, wet with mist. Rwanda, land of a thousand hills, lies in the crosshairs of the continent. This is the true heart of Africa, the last region to be reached by Europeans, located deep along the watersheds of the Congo and Nile rivers. It was at these falls, in 1894, that a German count first crossed into the Kingdom of Rwanda. And it was across these falls, across this bridge, that a 19-year-old Jean-Claude Munyazamu escaped. He has never seen the bridge before, though he remembers the bouncing of it. When he crossed twenty years ago, it was in the middle of the night, and he was hiding under coffee sacks in the back of a truck. What would have happened, I ask, if they had caught you? Oh, he smiles, they would have killed me. He says this without rancor or melodrama, but as a simple statement of fact, if they had caught me, they would have killed me. I first met Jean-Claude on a summery soccer pitch in Calgary several years earlier. Our children were on the same under-eight community soccer team, Go Tigers! Jean-Claude was one of the volunteer coaches. He later set up Soccer Without Boundaries, a local program that integrates immigrant and refugee children into their communities through sport, and which includes boys and girls from Syria, Somalia, Congo, Afghanistan, Philippines, and more. We became friends, our wives became friends, our children as well. Jean-Claude is a sociable and engaging person and endlessly optimistic, which seemed at odds to his background. Rwanda is beautiful, he would tell me. You have to visit. We'll go together. We'll bring soccer equipment to donate to schools. I agreed, though with some hesitation, not for concerns of safety, but sadness. Through Jean-Claude, I'd gotten to know Calgary's Rwandan community, and through them, I gained a glimpse into the darkness of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsis, when, over the course of 100 horrific days, nearly one million men, women, children were butchered under the ideological banner of Hutu power. I remember one young Rwandan-Canadian woman, softly spoken, telling me how she had survived the carnage as a little girl by climbing under the buddies. But no, not buddies. In her lovely accent, so rounded and rich, she was referring not to buddies, but bodies. <laughs> 